Viratna. Today we will learn about Lord Dalhousie. Dalhousie was one of the most powerful governor general during the last years of British East India Company's rule. He was the governor general from 1848 to 1856. He followed the policy of expansion. He was an, an exonist and he wanted to expand the British Empire and also make the British Empire in India even more supreme or paramount power. Since he followed the policy of expansion and wanted to consolidate the territories, their, their power in India, he fought several wars to expand the British Empire. In 1848, as soon as he came, he fought a second Sikh war against the Sikh ruler by name Raja Dalip Singh, who was the grandson of Ranjit Singh. The Sikhs had revolted and they wanted to take revenge of the first war. And Jalianwala and Gujarat were taken by the Britishers. Since Dalazi began to interfere, he revolted, and this led to the second Sikh war, where in which the Lipsing was defeated and Punjab was annexed into the British Empire. Oh, wow. And was given pension. Next week, Dalhousie fought the Second Burmese War in 1852 when he began to interfere in the British merchants' affairs in Burma. This precipitated to the war and the war was fought in which Burma was defeated by the Treaty of Yandabu. Rangoon and Burma fell into the hands of the Britishers. Nextly, he also, in the year 1856, fought, rather, he occupied out, which was one of the most loyal king, kingdom which remained loyal to the Britishers. That we will come to that. Meanwhile, by the virtue of subsidiary alliance, he also took over the districts of Ismanabad, Raichur and Beirat from the Nizams. One of the most important policies which Dalhousie introduced to conquer, uh, to us, rather to annex various kingdoms without waging war was the doctrine of lapse, whereby the British, it established this paramount of the East India Company. <laughs> According to this doctrine of lapse, if any ruler died without any an, a natural heir, the territory automatically would lapse into the British Empire. The ruler could not pass the kingdom to the adopted son without the permission of the British East India Company.
the british had the right to sanction or withhold the adoption this doctrine made no distinction between the allied dependent or subordinate or independent states it was applicable almost to all by the virtue of this doctrine of lapse galauzi annexed various states like paroli satara jaipur sambalpur udaipur jhansi nagpur and karnatak bera etc since still his thirst for expansion of the territory did not french and in 1856 on the pretext that the ruler had was neglecting administration he annexed out which was the turning point because since out rulers always remained loyal to the british east india company authority the annexation of out sent a signal strong signal to other rulers that it might be their turn also hence they it revolted that the annexation of out led to the 1857 revolt as it is defined by the historians apart from annexing various states dalauzi also introduced several reforms which which can be divided into administrative economic and socio religious reforms now we will take up the administrative reforms he introduced the centralized administration and organized non regulation system according to this is say according to this the administration was to be carried out by commissioner who was to be responsible for the governor general in council the magistrates were given all the power of administration as well as for punishments besides nextly dalhousie ordered for the movement of troops from bengal in the west to uh, and shifted the artillery from calcutta to meerut the army headquarters was shifted to shimla he also started reducing the indian soldiers in the army and nextly he also he started a new regiment called gurkha regiment he organized a irregular force in west punjab the british troops in indian princely states who had entered into the subsidiary alliance the, there the british troops were increased nextly economic coming to the economic reforms uh, sorry to prior to that we will was counting he made it compulsory for the indian soldiers to go to the it places where they were posted earlier option was there but now that option was abolished by dalhousie and several indian soldiers were posted to far off countries where the traveling sea became crossing sea became a compulsory for them since and which led to unrest among the indian sepoys 
coming to the economic reforms we introduced free trade policy whereby the british the goods on british imports and exports were made free tax free whereas indian goods were had were taxed heavily he also improved the harbors and ports that were developed improved which helped in the british trade coming to the social reforms balhousie introduced several reforms he was a pioneer you can say father of modern transport and communication in india he introduced post telegraphs and railways in 1853 the first railway line was laid from bombay to thane from calcutta to rani ganj and from madras to arcona he also started the public works department which was established in every presidency which was in charge of building roads canals bridges dams and so on he also introduced the postal uh, uniform rate in the postal department which was fixed to half an hour and also introduced the stamps postal stamps in in, in india he legalized with the help of ishwachandra vidyasagar the social reformer he legalized widow remarriage in india uh, which also led to the agitation among the unrest among the indians another important reform introduced by dalhousie was boots dispatch in the year 1854 which brought drastic changes in the education field so charles wood was appointed as the commissioner to to submit a report on education according to this wood dispatch recommendations education reforms were introduced by dalhousie as per this recommendation for the first time in india universities were established at at calcutta bombay and madras these universities were to be the examining bodies colleges were to be established which were affiliated to the universities for education and the syllabus curriculum that is curriculum was to be prescribed by these universities education was to be given in english and when english medium as well as in vernacular language as well and high schools were to be established which were to be on the teaching body and the district education officer was to be appointed to supervise over the curriculum in these schools private enterprises in education was to be encouraged the director general of education was to be appointed for india and it was also decided that education was to be secular so on these recommendations dalhousie introduced the educational reforms which helped in the establishment of a number of schools and colleges throughout 
the British rule, rule, ruled territories. See, in spite of introducing doctrine of lapse and annexing several kingdoms, Dalhousie was not yet satisfied, extended this doctrine of lapse to a little further, applied it to these, those area, uh, re regions where the rulers were already adopted, had been adopted by their fathers. That to see such rulers, Dalhousie abolished the titles and pensions. Those who were affected by this were Nana Sahib and the Raja of Tanjore. And in 1855, even the Mughal emperor also was stopped giving pensions. His pension was re uh, reduced and he was asked to move out of the palace. All these things led to a lot of unrest among the Indians who felt that these acts or reforms were introduced deliberately to spoil the Indian customs, traditions on the one hand, and to humiliate the rulers as such. Hence, when he left, when Dalhousie, Dalhousie left in 1856, it is this unrest which led to the outbreak of the revolt, that is the Great Revolt in 1857, for which Dalhousie was respond, responsible to a great extent. Right. Thank you.